Hey guys, starting next week, we're going to head back out there and we are going to hike and take pictures and do all sorts of wonderful things <laughs> with the camera. I can't wait to get back out there. I have been dreaming every single day of hiking and taking pictures and I can't wait to bring you with me. So because we're heading back out there, I thought I would share with you today some resources that help me outside of my regular camera bag stuff. Uh, some other resources that really help me with my photography and my videography and uh, hopefully they will help you too. So shall we get started? <laughs> I can put these resources into a few categories. There's photography, there's making video, and there is safety out there, and just for the pure joy and art of everything that we're doing. So we might as well start with photography. Uh, as you know, I shoot with a Sony A992 camera, and I have looked into upgrading so many times, but for now, I am really happy with the camera, and I'm going to stick with it. Beyond just the camera and the lenses and uh, your backpack and all of that sort of thing, there are a few extra items that I use that help me in my uh, pursuit of the art. And one of them is uh, something that I use that is helpful for night sky photography. The Pixel Pro TW283. And what this is, is an intervalometer. I think I've got that word right. <laughs> Basically, it allows me to take images at certain intervals to, uh, to get star trails. And it is fantastic. It's actually really easy to use. I will show it to you here. And it comes with uh, a couple of other pieces. And it is a bit of a learning curve to, <laughs> to setting it up. You attach this to your camera and you basically have a remote and it allows you to say do a 45 minute uh, exposure or set of exposures to get star trails. And I have used this before. The only time that I've had trouble, <laughs> besides dropping things, is that Sometimes I get confused about which cord plugs into where, but there is an instruction sheet and more than that, there is online help. And I do suggest that if you use one of these that you look up how to use it and maybe give it a practice go at home before you're out in the dark night sky and you're trying to figure out what you're doing and you can't see. I have done more night sky photography that is a single shot than ones with uh, star trails and so I don't have a lot to show you for this. Certainly nothing that I could say, ooh, look at this great photo that I took, but uh, it does work and I'll show you an image that I took with this Pixel Pro. So the other thing with photography is finding <laughs> inspiration. Where do you go to take images? And uh, I really just use a few different resources for inspiration. One is this book, Hikes and Outings in South Central Ontario. And no matter where you are, there are probably books like this that can help you to figure out maybe someplace interesting to go. And 110 Nature Hotspots in Ontario, this is another great book that I have used. I like the ones that are really easily uh, easy to read and kind of inspiring. They have nice pictures, a nice big title for each page, uh, a little write up about what you're gonna find there and what the hike is like and uh, more like that. So there's, there's basically one spot for each page and I like that too because I'm not looking to read a novel, I'm looking to find a place to go. So I have books like that, but 
Another resource that is absolutely fabulous is the All Trails app or the All Trails website. If you haven't used this before, I would highly recommend checking it out. So on All Trails, you can search for your parameters, the distance that you want to go, what you want to see, uh, and etc. And whether it's an easy, a moderate, an advanced trail, that kind of thing. And what you'll get is uh, a list of places that meet your criteria and a bunch of reviews from people who have been there and their photos. So it's a really, really great app, a really great website if you use it on just the, uh, de the desktop. And I highly recommend it. I have found a bunch of places using all trails and I have started putting them into my hiking journal. And I now have a, a bunch of places listed that I'm going to be visiting and taking you with me to take images. So I'm excited about that. I think All Trails is a really great resource and I highly recommend it. A couple more things for photography. I recommend that when you are out taking your images, uh, you are going to meet people that are really interesting and really nice and people that you'd love to talk to again. And so I recommend bringing your business cards. Now, it's not that you're trying to sell to them. It really is the easiest way to exchange information. It is easier than trying to, you know, write their info down in your iPhone or <laughs> uh, sending a, a message. You just, you have your business card and you give it to them and you, you say, you know, hey, maybe next time we can get together or we can go out or maybe they do want to see the images that you've been shooting. I, I highly recommend bringing your business cards along. Another resource for when you get back and you are going to edit your images, if you are a digital photographer, as I am, um, is you may wish to use hard drives that are uh, external to your computer. I do this a lot because I have so many images and my iMac just would not hold them all. But it's not that easy to determine which hard drive is a good one to go with. And so I just have one sort of like beware of and one recommendation. So I used to use these Seagate backup drives and these are HHD drives, sorry, HDD drives, which means that there are moving components inside and this hard drive holds a lot and it's less expensive However, I have had a number of these fail on me over time. And uh, that's not good. I mean, my, my photos are important to me. I've put a lot of work into them and I don't want to lose them because a two gigabyte, four gigabyte hard drive has suddenly stopped loading. So these Seagate ones that are HDDs, I, I do give a word of caution I prefer, I much prefer these uh, smaller Samsung drives or any other type of drive that is an SSD. They don't have moving parts inside and they're so much faster to use. Uh, the reading and write speed is so much faster and because there's no moving parts, they are not as likely to fail. So they cost about twice as much, but if you can afford them, I recommend them. So moving on to videography, a lot of photographers do find that at some point in their career they get interested in making moving pictures as well as stills. And for myself it was actually a great surprise when I uh, found myself intrigued by this because I always thought that I really wasn't into video. However, video has the ability to capture things that a still image can't. It's, it's not that one's better than the other, but there comes a time in a lot of people's photography careers when they feel like exploring this avenue. And so there are a couple of resources that I use that help me with my videography, making my vlogs, taking uh, the videos and so on. And I just want to share them with you. 
I use the Canon M50 for video. That is the camera that I am videoing with right now. So I'd love to show it to you in my hands here, but I can't do that. But this camera is absolutely fantastic for quality, for size, for uh, portability, everything. It's, it's fantastic. It's a really great camera. And I think for the price, you get an amazing uh, resource, this camera to use for your videography. It has a flip out screen so that you can see yourself if you're doing uh, any vlogging or if you're putting yourself in video. And, uh, and it's, it's really compact. It does also allow you to remove the lens and put on a different lens. So it, it's great. It's very versatile. It's fantastic. But I have also desired over time to have a more compact system for when I don't want to be carrying a big rig around with me. So the reason why I say big, I'm talking about the M50 being very small, but it is not... If you're just walking around with the camera like this and you're walking, you're gonna get a very shaky video. So I still use the Crane, Zion Crane V2 gimbal. And it, <laughs> it goes together, I'll show you like this. The camera sits on the top and then the batteries screw in. And then the tripod so and with the mic on top as you can see I'm actually walking around with quite a big video system it's very it commands a lot of attention from people as I walk by which is fine I've kind of gotten used to it but sometimes you just want to have something smaller a little bit lighter and uh, the newer gimbals are actually heavier than this one. So moving to a newer gimbal that provides enough power is probably not the way to go. So what I've done instead is I've bought a second video camera. And on the days when I don't wish to use the uh, bigger setup, I now have a GoPro and it's the GoPro Hero 9. <laughs> and I like this camera. I have not always been a huge fan of GoPros, but this one and all of the uh, updates that they have done to it are fantastic. So you can see this tiny little uh, tripod. It's a, it opens to a tripod and it is fantastic and I can use it without a gimbal because the the steadiness of the video, the settings for steadiness are incredible. And so as I'm moving the camera around, it is very, very uh, subtly changing the views so that it is not a shaky video. So I have this tiny little thing and I can clip a very small mic onto it that uh, I can clip one on me and one onto the thing. And so this is a much smaller setup than the other one. So the GoPro Hero 9 has really helped me in terms of video and just uh, being more mobile, more able to get out there and, and video when it might be a little bit more difficult or just not as inspiring to get all of the big gear together to go out. And along with that, I have purchased an extra battery for it. It lasts quite long and a beautiful double charger that you just stick the batteries into and then you plug it in. So I can stick both batteries in there, plug it in and I'm charged. So that is <laughs> the cameras. Now lighting is also very, very important. And I have showed you before this small light that I have. And I can put this right on top of my camera and it's fantastic. It just, uh, it is so portable and so uh, great. I love that it has a cold shoe on the bottom and a cold shoe mount on the top so that I can put it on my camera, but I can also add the mic on top and I'm not out of cold shoes. So this is a very, very uh, inexpensive, I think it's Ulanzi uh, light, but 
sometimes when you're doing video you re or require something a little bit uh, more powerful and I have used this light not only for video but also for photography because it is fantastic and it has a whole bunch of different features. This is the Godox LF308 light and it has these barn doors and the light is very very customizable in terms of like how you want to angle it. Uh, there are colored uh, film that you can use on top of it to change the color of the light. You just put either a battery in the back or uh, you can just plug it straight into the wall. And the fantastic thing about it is that it's also a flash. So I've used this when I've been doing uh, splashes and pours images and I'll show you a couple of those. It's been a really handy light. There's a little stand you can put it on. It has a cold shoe. It also has a tripod screw. It's really, really versatile. And uh, I highly recommend it if you have need for a light or a flash light. In terms of safety out there and hiking, I mean, the safer you are, the more you're going to enjoy your out of doors experience and uh it just it feels so awesome to get out there and just be in the sun or in the rain under the clouds and surrounded by nature it's so amazing i just want to spend all my time soaking it up and not worrying about uh you know if i get injured if there's animals nearby uh, any sort of things can can happen and you kind of need to be a little bit prepared so i have purchased this year this Garmin Mini, InReach Mini. You can see there. The InReach Mini. This is basically a <laughs> an SOS uh, thing. So as it's very, very small, it can clip onto where my backpack or my straps or whatever it's very very tiny it doesn't take up a lot of weight in your bag but you can message people with it you can send out an SOS you can get uh, emergency assistance if uh, you're lost in the woods or if you're you're really um, out of sorts and, and you don't know what to do you can, it has GPS you can follow this uh, maps to help you get back to where you are if you got lost it's not something I've used yet, but I'm excited to have it. And I'm really, really, uh, you do need a subscription for it, but I'm really looking forward to activating the subscription and trying it out. So I have the Garmin InReach Mini. I can also use the Garmin InReach Mini with my watch because it's a Garmin watch. And so the two talk to one another. And, uh, the other thing that I carry with me all the time is dog spray. So I have never had to use it, thankfully, but it's a very small thing of dog spray that I can keep in my pocket. And if an animal decides to attack, I have a way to defend myself. And uh, bear spray if you're out in bear country, definitely. So this is just a few of the extras that I use when I'm out doing photography and videography and I can't wait until next week we go out together and we start vlogging again. This is going to be fantastic. The sun is higher in the sky these days. It is brighter in the northern hemisphere and I am really, really looking forward to getting out and hiking. I've been practicing up yesterday. I went for an 11.6 kilometer walk. And so today I'm a little sore, but you know what? The more we do it, the more fantastic it's going to be. And I can't wait to, uh, to see you as we go. If you have any suggestions for uh, sort of extra resources that you use that you love, please leave them in the comments. I'm always on the lookout and so is everybody else and uh, that would be fantastic. Now you guys, I hope that you're having a fantastic day and that if you haven't subscribed already, I would love it if you would do so and 
let's uh, let's go from here. I hope your day is full of smiles, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.